And finally, I would say that um, you know we do have the amendment process. Admittedly, the um, uh, uh, it's still not easy to amend the uh, Illinois Constitution, uh, much, much easier than it was under the old Constitution. Um, we've had 10 amendments adopted, uh, many of them, I agree, not earth-shattering, although several have been fairly uh, important and fairly substantive. Uh, and we've also had six which made it to the ballot, but were turned down by the voters. And unfortunately, that, unfortunately, that included one that dealt with the school funding issue. Uh, it was voted down by the uh, voters, even though it made it out of the uh, legislature. Um, and it seems to me that for those and, and it includes many of my very good friends uh, uh, who have special um, projects, special interests that they have on their agenda. Uh, and that could include not just the things that, uh, that Pat Quinn has talked about, but for example, merit selection of judges, which happens to be one of my uh, passionate uh, issues. Uh, but what I've told my friends who are saying we ought to have a constitutional convention to deal with that is go focus on that issue alone. Don't open up the, the entire document and allow all the rest of these issues to come in. Um, uh, it, you really may do a better job if you get people educated and focused on a single issue uh, so that you can uh, get all of the arguments for and against it uh, brought to bear. Again, uh, no constitutional impediment in the current Constitution uh, prevents uh, the legislature from doing any of the kinds of things that m with maybe one exception, uh, that most of us would like mm -hmm. to have done right now, uh, including, by the way, having a, uh, a progressive revenue structure. Um, the, sure, we, we've got a flat rate uh, uh, provision in there for the income tax, which some of us fought very hard against, uh, and I'm not sure that you would not be able to, that you'd be able to change that at this point in time. But even with a flat rate requirement, if you want to build some uh, progressivity, some fairness into the tax structure, you can do it with the base. We made very clear uh, that the base is open to, you know, if you have an inversely graduated personal exemption, for example, you could take poor you could take the woman who's doing Trump's um, uh, laundry or whatever it is, uh, you could take her completely off of the, uh, uh, the tax base by increasing the personal exemption. So there are a lot of things that can be done. The problem is um, the elected representatives are there and they've got to do some of this. And part, a lot of what it seems to me the proponents are really saying uh, is uh, not that the existing constitution is uh, antiquated or too restrictive or not good. Uh, it's not what's in the Constitution. It's what is not in the Constitution that they would like to have added to the Constitution, uh, you know, their pet project. And I use that word, uh, and, uh, I don't mean it to sound as nasty as it probably did, because some of these are my pet projects also that I'd like to change. Um, but it's primarily that. And what they're, the real problem, I think, is that um, they don't trust the representative system. Uh, they don't trust uh, those who are literally elected to represent the people. Now, maybe they don't re represent you, Pat, and they, some of them, heaven knows, don't represent me, uh, but they represent the people who actually voted for them to be there. Uh, and you know that's the system we have, and we're not going to be able to, to, uh, to change that system. And remember, it is also those same folks uh, who will decide all of the ground rules of the Constitutional Convention. It's the current governor and the, the general, next General Assembly who will decide um, uh, whether it's going to be a partisan or a nonpartisan election, and I certainly wouldn't bet on nonpartisan again, um, uh, when it's going to be held, uh, where it's going to be held, uh, how long it can last, uh, uh, whether the delegates can be legislators. Aha. Uh, we only had two in 1970. I bet you we have a lot more right now. Uh, um, all of those ground rules are going to be decided by the legislature and by this governor, uh, if indeed the call is um, successful. Uh, and um, uh, we will be facing, I think, uh, as I said before, uh, a litany of very hot button, controversial issues. Not all of them are going to make it into the, uh, uh, into the process. Sure, they have to be voted on first by the delegates and then by the voters uh, in the referendum following. But some of them are going to make it. 
and I think that a lot of the restrictive uh, revenue measures are the most likely to make it. That plus, well, a couple of others I won't, won't even suggest. Um, uh, the, um, uh, the fact is, though, that they will all be there. They will have a heavy dominant impa impact uh, on the atmosphere of the convention. Uh, and I really believe um, that we would be better off trying to focus separately and really get the legislature, for heaven's sakes, to pay attention to some of the things that you think need to be done or that I think need to be done. Uh, but get them focused on those things uh, and, and not try to open up the whole Pandora's uh, box. Uh, we don't have a constitutional crisis in the state of Illinois. We have a leadership crisis. We now have time to take questions. I only ask that when the mi you wait for the microphone to come around and to the panelists to, to speak into the microphone. So questions. Uh, I'd like to just address this to Lieutenant Governor Pat Quinn. Uh, in 1848, the Constitution allowed basically in Illinois the results of the Constitution of 1847 allowed basically free banking. And free banking was a disaster for the next 25 years. In 1862, we did away with banks completely. We didn't have any banks. We'd go back to species. That was the delegates' decision in 1862. In 1862, they also banned Negroes, and that's the word they use, Negroes, in the Constitution, from coming into the state of Illinois. What's to prevent those type of, those that same complexion uh, that same decision of events uh, occurring if we have a constitutional convention. Uh, okay. Well, number one, uh, I think this is a historic year in America where the tremendous participation of people in politics, in democracy, is quite refreshing, whether you look at the Democratic primary for president or the Republican primary with the rise of uh, Governor Huckabee uh, I think there's a lot of individuals who are interested in politics and government. And I believe whatever your political persuasion, Democrat, Independent, Republican, that people are truly interested in where our country and where our state are going. And as uh, Senator or Comptroller Netsch uh, pointed out, uh, any amendment to our existing Constitution has to be ratified by the voters. It first has to be approved by the delegates to be submitted to the voters, and then the voters have to vote for that. Now, I have enough trust in the voters of Illinois that they're not going to vote for things that are anathema to our fundamental concepts of democracy and liberty in America. Uh, I think there'll be robust debate on a lot of issues, and I think that's very healthy. And in listening to Comptroller Netsch uh, talk about um, the single issue dominance of uh, various interest groups uh, that could infect the Constitution, well, that's what's happening right now in Illinois in the legislature. We're not getting the kind of debate on important issues like education and how it's funded uh, with the current process. And I want to go back in history because American history is replete with people um, at the grassroots level saying, rather than just have a legislature, uh, the Constitutional Convention mechanism has been used throughout American history to be a crowbar to break open gridlock, uh, uh, open up uh, debate on subjects that haven't been addressed by the elected representatives. And that's what Americans have believed from day one of our country. And I think that's why we have this provision, why we have constitutional conventions, 